All right, the first thing I want to say is a special thank you to Jesse Garant and Associates. They're in uh, Michigan and they're up in uh, Canada. They did the CAT scans and they did them at, for no charge in the interest of science. They knew what was here and they decided they were going to help out. Now, this is an item that was sent for DNA testing. This is a lung. And this is the investment of the lung. And that's the upper investment of the lung. And that right there is the airway that comes inside. This is the patterning of the lung, and I can show, I'm going to show you all this. This material is fascia, or I may have another word for it. Uh, I think it might be pleura or something like that on a lung, but it's, what it is is a coating. And this coating is the preservative agent. These preserve in mud just like they do in the wet environment of the body. They're supposed to be a barrier. That's what their whole function is. And this, all this keratinous material in here, this fibrous material, and I'm going to show you what it's like in a human body, in a living human body. It's almost the same as this when they're dead. And this is the same thing. This is, uh, hold on a second. This is uh, the type of preservation we have here. It's absolutely phenomenal that these things are preserved almost like they're living flesh. And the inside of here, you can see the, uh, the fibers that are the uh, bands of muscle, and you can see the uh, uh, elastins and uh, everything. They're all in there. And this is, um, this is fascia. This is fascia. It's a, it's a uh, same stuff you have in our bodies. You can see right there, that's a fascial lap, a uh, flat, flap they call it. And that thing there invests the fascia into the rest of the fascia. The whole fascia now has got a complete system that coats the body. They realize that it's not just something that is like fluff in there. This is a major factor, fascia. And then anyway, that's come out just... And I noticed it in my stuff, and I've been talking with people over in Germany about it. They realize that they're doing some work on fascia. Anyway, very interesting stuff, and, and it's because of this protection of the mud. And it's always been thought of that mud won't protect. Now, and, and wet environments won't protect. Now, I can agree with that if it's a porous environment where oxygen can get down there, and the moisture, the oxygen, the, the, you, you're done. No, I, I agree with that. But when uh, something is in this fine, fine, pla th this particular area, the fine platypolar silicates, and you know, I've done pretty serious analysis on this, and that's what it is. And that's what coats them, and the electricity in the earth protects them, uh, forces that coating on quickly. And, and I have no idea how old these things are, because I really don't have the money to do all this stuff. I've done a lot of stuff that I, I just can't afford to do anymore. But I have, I have everything that I think I need. I, I can't, just can't go any further. I need some... I'd like to find out how old they are and, you know, all, everything about them. And that's what I've been asking for. That's all I'm asking for. Somebody take a look. If they think it's just silly stuff, I'll throw them back in the woods. But, I, you know, you'd have to prove that to me, and I, I think I proved that it's not. So that's the case. I need someone to come along and look at this. And, and I have some other stuff. It's just phenomenal. They, 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 when I took these out of the ground, they literally bled. I'm not kidding you. I'm going to show you. <laughs> so it's bizarre, but it's true. And I understand why. Because I, ha I found out that the whole idea of this is pH. It's all about pH. And when something is, is, is in certain pH, it's extremely acidic and then caustic and acidic and so forth, back and forth. They, there's, there's things called chelation where metals are, are stored and protected and then as they hit with acids, they, they come out. This particular area was a deep, deep rift valley. They, and it's been said by a paper in Yale that this is a doorway into the earth, this exact spot. And it's got horse grave and faulting, which is where the lowest, lowest areas of the earth lift up. You can see here, this is tectonite. Uh, yeah, well, ultramafic. This is ultramafic. I have tectonites here that are the, you know, L and S tectonites. Uh, but ultramafics, this is as deep as you go. This is where they, everything gets flat. They flatten out and they turn molten. Uh, I have other stuff that was higher up. I have bones here. Do you see these bones? Now that's an articulated bone. That's not a stripped down bone like you find uh, that they usually look uh, in the normal fossils. This still has the cartilage. 
It has the uh, emphasis points. It has all the uh, Sharpie fibers. It, it, I mean, it's it's a it's a complete anatomical model of a living bone, not a dead fossilized bone. But you notice in here, you don't see the bone. Well, that reason is is because the 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 moisture and the invading molecules and, and uh, uh, ions turn it into different materials than bone. However, it still has a lot of organics in there and this would easily test organically. As this did, as a couple other items, that one back there, uh, and there was another one, I forget what it was. Oh, oh, it was, another, it was some uh, skin. Anyway, <laughs> it's, it's bizarre, but it's true. And some of them are small, this is like normal human beings, and some of them are quite large. So I need to have it looked at, that's all. I'll show you the CAT scan in a second. And I don't know how well this is going to play out here. This is from uh, right off the internet, it's called What is Fascia? And that right there, that little flap, is a fascial investment. And all these little fibrous keratinous materials are what we're finding in the fascia of the mud fossils that we have. I don't know if that'll show up well. Anyway, that is what is um, fascia. And that is what I just showed you here. This is the same material. And there's a latch right here. It has the actual fascial latch. There it is right there. I don't know if you can see that. Like I say, this is not good lighting and it's not a lot of things, but it is what it is. All right. All right. I mentioned that some of this stuff came out of the ground and literally bled, and that is true. This is exactly what came out, and I'll show you the, the item that it came out of. It was a lung. And I had another lung that was completely tested and totally 100% totally uh, human. And that's this one here. It was DNA tested, 100% human. This one was, the fascia was missing, but you can see the lobes of the lung underneath. And this is just bled literally like blood coming out of it. That's what I just showed you. This one had vein and arteries in here. And that black on the top is what they call a uh, silhouette, a, a bone silhouette, the black from the ferritins in the bone and that's exactly what your finger looks like underneath. It's all human remains and they're, you know, and as you can see they're very, very large. Uh, some of them are normal, you know, like this is a normal, a normal human lung. And, uh, and other ones, I don't think this is too exceptionally large. But this right here is the tip of a human fingerprint, a finger. And it's been uh, tested and CAT scan and DNA and it is 100% human and it is quite large. As you can see it's about seven inches long. It's about six or seven inches wide so it's it's from a pretty good sized guy. Not your average uh, citizen. This was earlier when the um, this was um, just taken out of the ground. It really had almost exactly the same color as the meat. It's darkened up as it's been sitting around a few years. All right, this is one of the cat scans, and this is the the fingertip. That um, that is one fingertip, and I believe it's a left thumb. I believe it's just like that, and that's the fingernail bed. It's clear in other shots as well. And that's that little lump that's in the back of your finger. If you follow all the architecture, you'll see the skin goes around this way. The fingernail bed is here. Under here is what's called an apical tuft. In the CAT scan, all through here, you see all these little holes and things? It's what's called areolar tissue. It's, it's somewhat degraded, but this is pretty fresh. This thing is not very, very, um, it's not deteriorated much at all. It's only the skin really is missing. Um, and the fingernail, and a little bit of the flesh here and there. But anyway, it's got all, all the details. You can see inside the soft bone, the hard bone, uh, everything. Uh, let me see if I can find another shot here. 
Well, this here inside, uh, you can see all these features inside on a CAT scan. That's the apical tuft, and that's in there. Here's another shot showing the outline of the fingertip, fingernail. Underneath there is the areolar tissue. This is the bottom, and there's pads on the bottom of your thumb. If you start feeling around, you'll feel high and low spots, and those are all here, too. And that's here. That's the apical tuft right here on the end. It has all these circular investments in a very knobby thing. And then these are the pads of your hand, fingertip. They're all the same. And uh, it was all kinds of stuff. This shows the areolar tissue. See the, the bone pattern inside there? And there was there's a lot of other shots here. They did a fabulous job with these CAT scans of Jesse Garant and, and, and so forth. They, they, they're active. See, there's the, there's the bone halo on the outside and there's a the soft bone on the inside. It's all here. And the other, and you can see the area, see this is boom, boom. See these little holes? Are, those are the blood investments that go around your, the outside of your finger. And they're, they're called areolar tissue. Now, areolar means holes. There's holes all through here. And, th and that is what feeds the basement layers of, with blood and all that business. Anyway, it's pretty conclusive. So I just need somebody to take a look at it. All right. Um, this is the palm of a hand that went with the finger that was, was CAT scanned. And it was also DNA tested and proven to be human. And this is the palm that goes with that finger. Now, if you notice down here, look really carefully at the structure of that. It's like somebody almost painted it on there and gooped it on there. This whole area here is the palm of the hand. And I believe it's a left palm. And it's there. Now, look, watch right down here. If you bend your hand back, you end up with a tendon identical to this. All right, and that is different than the rest of the hand. Now, if you notice down here, you're going to see that same silicon dioxide that I've talked about. That is the preservative agent. That's where the thumb ran off that side, and these are where the fingers go. And we found a bunch of the fingers that go with it, and some of them have been CAT scanned and uh, DNA tested, and they're, they're human. And there's one that actually looks like it has a fingernail still on it, but the fingernail's gone, but you can see where it was. Anyway, it's pretty interesting.